What mark did God give Cain, and how does it relate to black people? The curse and the mark of Cain is narrated in Genesis 4 verses 11 to 16. God cursed Cain for the wicked crime of killing his brother, Abel, for no other reason than jealousy and resentment. The reason and the nature of the curse is clear and very well understood to be that the ground will not yield bountifully to Cain's farming, no matter how hard he works. He would wander the earth without comfort and peace of mind. When Cain complained that his punishment was too much and that he would be killed while wandering the earth, God put a mark on him. It is this mark that has become a subject of discussions and speculation for many years. What is the mark of Cain? Was it a physical attribute? Was it some kind of a number? Does it have to do with the color of his skin? This episode will focus on exploring the mark of Cain and how it has been used for many generations as a symbol of oppression. The Hebrew term for mark is oth, which is interpreted to mean a sign, an omen, a warning, a remembrance, or a promise. The mark of Cain represents God's promise to protect Cain from vengeance resulting from the murder of Abel. It was a mark of deterrence for anyone intending to harm Cain as he endured the curse of wandering the earth. So what is the nature of the mark of Cain? No one knows for sure because the Bible is not explicit about it. But there have been many educated conjectures, which I will now list. 1. It was an Hebrew or Sumerian symbol etched on Cain's face or arm. This was supposed to serve as a warning to others, dissuading them from committing a similar transgression as Cain. 2. A renowned Jewish scholar, Abba Jose ben Hanan, believed the mark was a horn that grew out of Cain. 3. Rashi and other notable scholars, including Rabbi Michael Berg, believe the mark consisted of one of the Hebrew letters from the Tetragrammaton, that was engraved on Cain's forehead. 4. Finally, some American Protestant believe the mark of Cain is the black skin. They used the mark and the curse to mean the same thing. God turned Cain's skin black so that he could be marked for protection from any would-be attackers. In some Protestant groups, this racial beliefs about the mark of Cain became rampant. In the United States during the period of slavery, these denominations began propagating the belief that the mark of Cain signified a dark skin tone and as a justification for the enslavement of black people. Case in point, the division between Northern and Southern Baptist organizations originated from the doctrinal disputes concerning slavery and the education of enslaved individuals. During this split, the Southern Baptist faction used the concept of the curse of Cain to rationalize slavery. Many of these racial segregation based on the interpretation of the mark of Cain continued well in the mid-20th century. In 1995, the Southern Baptist Convention officially renounced racism and expressed regret for its historical defense of slavery. It's important to note that the majority of Christian churches worldwide, including the Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodox Churches, Anglican churches, and Oriental Orthodox churches did not endorse these interpretations, nor did they participate in the religious movements that upheld them. The origins of Mormonism coincide with a period in North America when the curse of Cain doctrine, as well as the more prevalent curse of Ham doctrine, were widely accepted among Protestants. For a time, Mormons held the belief that black Africans bore Cain's mark in the form of black skin and were subject to Ham's curse. In the Pearl of Great Price, a scripture highly regarded by most Mormons, Enoch discusses the avoidance of the descendants of Cain, emphasizing their black skin. And Enoch also beheld the residue of the people which were the sons of Adam, and they were a mixture of all the seed of Adam, save it was the seed of Cain, for the seed of Cain were black, 
and had no place among them. Moses 7 verse 22, the pearl of great price. Brigham Young, the president of the church at one point, asked, What is the mark? You will see it on the countenance of every African you ever did see. In 1892, he is noted to have said, People of black African heritage were ineligible to hold the church's priesthood. He further proclaimed that during the war in heaven, both Cain and Abel held leadership roles. The spirits of black individuals aligned with Cain and were designated as his descendants, while those who fought alongside Abel were identified as Abel's offspring. Young added that Cain sought to gain an advantage for his followers by killing Abel. However, God imposed a curse on Cain and his descendants, barring them from holding the priesthood until all of Abel's descendants had received it. The spirits of black people, according to Young, understood this decree and willingly accepted their punishment by standing with Cain. In 1954, Church President David O. McKay reportedly stated, We believe that we have a scriptural precedent for withholding the priesthood from the Negro. It is a practice, not a doctrine, and the practice someday will be changed. Indeed, it has since changed. It is noteworthy that the practice changed around 1978, as people of all races are now eligible to be ordained in the church. This sad history is a reminder for us to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the wisdom of God's Word to us. We should never impose our worldview on God's Word. How many lives are destroyed because good people of God misinterpret the meaning and the intention behind the Word of God, as was done with the Mark of Cain? We will never know for sure, just as we probably will never know the actual mark that God placed to Cain. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are new here. Please like and share this video. God bless you. Amen.